We're going to be working on a few bits today, including number recognition, counting, and addition and subtraction. You can move through these on different days, at different times. Um, don't feel the need to power through everything if your child seems a little confused, um, so feel free to stop this as and when um, so that you get the time to really practice this at home. There's no rush. Um, in this video, we're going to use um, some counters in place of Numicon, but if you have Numicon at home, then that's even better. So Numicon look like this. Um, they're really good for number recognition, and I definitely recommend buying a kit if you're planning on doing work at home, even beyond lockdown. Um, but we've tried to make sure that today you don't need lots of special equipment or anything like that, and you can just do this with the items around your house. So, um, let's get going with the first step. Now our first step here is putting items in the same formation as the Numicon frames. I'm going to attach a picture to this video so you can see what all of the Numicon frames from 1 to 10 look like so you can match up the items at home. For this video I'm just putting in a couple of examples for you. So like I said you can use counters like I am here, you can use pennies, just any uniform object that you have at home. So we're going to do two and then three we put in that kind of formation to replicate these dots there and then four would just be that with the green dot there. I am a perfectionist so I'm using all of the same colour for each number but you don't actually have to. Um, okay so that would make five. So get your child to copy the picture or copy some of the counters that you've laid out so that they can put the numbers in the right formations. Um, once they've got some idea of that, then you can start kind of mixing it up, testing them a little bit. Um, so getting them, giving them six counters and getting them, your child to put them in the right formation. If you have enough objects to make a row of these, so that you have the two and five, then you can start matching up some number cards to them. Or if you don't have number cards, you can just do this on one big piece of paper and write the numbers underneath. So the reason that we're doing this activity is to help your child to recognise numbers from sight, as that will help to speed up counting later on. Um, further down the line when they get a little bit older this is also going to help when they're doing addition and subtraction so we're laying the groundwork now. If you wanted to make this a little bit more fun for your child and more engaging then you can start to grab other objects from around the house that can be put into this formation as well so if you have some toy cars then you can put them down and count them by putting that, them in that formation and then figuring out which Numicon they resemble. Putting different objects next to the number cards and in these different formations is actually going to be really helpful for your child as it brings number to life a little bit more. So rather than being this abstract concept where they see numbers written down on paper, now they understand what five of something means. Okay, so once your child is familiar with the formation of the Numicon shapes, now we can start looking at addition and subtraction of numbers. So we're just going to start with one, first of all. So if your child's four or five, then this is a good place to start. Um, even with four-year-olds, if you're worried that they're not old enough to start writing sums and things like that, that's absolutely fine. What we do with a lot of our younger students is we do a lot of hands-on work while they're little, lay that foundation, help them to start understanding numbers and then when they're older and more capable of writing then they kind of take off from there because they already understand how numbers work. So I have five here and you're just going to show your child what happens when we add a one to that. So now ask them how many they have. Um, your child may need to count which is fine, um, just if they are counting make sure they do so systematically. So you don't want them going one, two, three, four, five, six. So start from the bottom and have a system. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Counting systematically is actually a really important skill for young children, so this is a good chance to practice it. Okay, so now we have, when we add one to five, then we have six. So you can start using language like adding with your child so they're familiar with that word. Okay, so just like if we had four there, then what happens when we add one? We have five. So 
you can add some and get your child to count them. They will probably be quite happy if you switch roles at some point as well. So they can tell you how many counters to put out. Then they can add the one themselves. Get them to put it in the right place when they're adding the one. And then get you to tell them how many you have. What you can do just to test them a little bit after a while is if you tell them, let's say that they've done four, they've added the one, and you tell them that now you have three, they can tell you whether you're correct or not. So they'll love correcting you as well. You can also do subtraction with this. Um, remember you can use different words for subtraction like subtract, minus, and take away. You might want to start with take away because that's a word that we use in life in general that might make more sense to your child, but do start to introduce words like subtract and minus so that they're familiar with them. So we see the four here, what happens if I take away one, then you count and we have three. Hopefully after some work on number formation with the first exercise, your child will start to recognise that when we have dots or counters in this position, that's three. Um, so that's the first step towards them progressing with their mental maths. If this task is getting quite easy for your child and they're counting the counters that are left and telling you how many you have left, what you might want to start doing is seeing if they can guess the answer to the question. So you can say, okay, I have three, how many will I have if I add one? And then if they're familiar with the formation, they can start to visualize what you'll have. They'll start to recognize that the, the next unit would go there and hopefully can start telling you that you have four. Don't rush that stage though. It's not every child's going to get there at the same time and it will take quite a bit of practice for most children to be able to do that. Um, but this is just something that you can do to challenge your child if that exercise is getting a little bit too easy. So if you've done that last exercise and you've worked on adding one, adding two, added three, and your child's feeling very confident with those, then you can start introducing mathematical symbols and written number. Now, bear in mind, especially at the moment, I'm sure a lot of the children won't want to write. So um, you might want to make some number cards at home or just do the writing for them. So maybe occasionally they can write, especially if you've swapped roles and they're being the teacher, then they'll need to write because teachers write. But um, otherwise you can just use the number cards and just work on recognition for now. Don't worry about doing everything at once because we want your child to be absorbing this information and engaged in the task, not having a tantrum because they don't want to write anything. So we have one and five here. I've just put the Numicon here so you can see how we would do it with Numicon. And we can add the one there, we can add the one there, and we have six. So now let's go back and put the symbols in there. So you can explain to your child that this is the symbol for add. So one, add five, and then you can ask your child what that made. Introduce the equal sign for when we have a total amount of something. And then you can write the six at the end for them. And then review the number sentence so that they understand what you've done. So we had one, and then we added five, and that made, that equaled six. You can write that in there. So the number cards are good for speed, but they're not an absolute necessity in this. And same with the Numicon, so you can put one plus five equals. And with this, you can put the six Numicon frame there because it's easily done. Um, but then perhaps underneath, you can write out the numbers for each one. So you write one plus five equals six in digits. Of course, you can do the same thing with subtraction. So we start with the five and we take away, you might even want to take away the one there. Take away one and that makes four. With Numicon, we put the frame over the top there and then look at how much is left. So the one kind of covers it up. You'll notice that I'm starting all of these with one. Um, that's a good place to start. You can spend a while on plus and minus one because eventually your child's going to need to know those by heart. So it doesn't hurt to spend quite a while doing those on paper and for them to just grasp what's going on there. Um, but you can move on to two, three, um, maybe even four, if you feel like your child's capable.
if your child's keen and you're, they're comfortable with doing so and they've understood where, where to put the plus and the equal sign here. Um, by the way, spend some time also talking about what the equal sign having to go at the end. Just make it clear that you can't just put that at the beginning of the sum. Um, but once they're comfortable with those signs and they understand what they mean, then you might want to start writing down some sums for your child on paper. So you can write down four plus two equals and then get them to figure out the answer to that sum using objects. Again, if they're not keen on writing, then you can get them to put those objects together and then you write the answer as long as they've told you what to write. Okay, so, you can work through those steps in the video, starting where you think is going to challenge your child and maybe just check that the earlier steps are totally okay with them before you move on. Remember I said there's no rush, so you may spend several days on each step, um, work on it over a couple of weeks, and even once your child has got the hang of this, then remember to keep coming back to this activity even as you add other mathematical activities on top. I'd say aim to do um, 10, hopefully 15 minutes or so of this a day, particularly at the beginning. Um, and then once your child tires of that, you can either do something else in maths or something in English, like practicing handwriting or playing with magnetic letters. And I'll upload some videos to give you some ideas for those as well and a couple of worksheets. So remember, do this regularly. Try and see if you can fit it into your life around the house as well, because that's a good way of reinforcing the learning without feeling strict about it. Um, so your child might put their Smarties in the right formation or the cushions from your sofa or something. If you have a restless child, then you might want to try doing these activities in different rooms of your house and taking items from around the house just to keep it a little bit interesting so it doesn't feel like you sit down in the same place every day and do the same activity. So remember, reinforcement, little and often is the best way to do it and see if you can try and introduce different, activity, different ways of doing this activity to see what your child engages with.